Hey YouTubers, it's been quite a while since I've last posted a video. It's March and I've been impatiently awaiting the return of boating season here in Western New York. Uh, it's hard to believe this system I created in 2015 is now almost four years old, but uh, to be fair, it's a little less than two years old in terms of actual service uh, because I'm using it just seasonally for about five to six months at a time during the boating season. Uh, but all the original parts are still functioning very well. The charge controller, the batteries, the inverter, all still working very well. Uh, it's about time for another upgrade and uh, that's in the works to keep me busy during this uh, colder month of March until it's time to get back on the water. This uh, solar generator and my video series is now approaching a total of 1 million views and that's just astounding to me. I want to thank everyone who's taken interest in my videos, who's liked them, who's shared them, and especially to all of my subscribers. Your continued interest is always appreciated. Many who've posted uh, inquired about how this system is grounded and uh, it is not actually grounded, but it does have a neutral ground bond. And uh, just as a forewarning, I'm not an electrician, so please do your own research or consult with a professional to ensure your safe use of a portable generator system like this. My understanding is that a neutral to ground bond improves the safe use of inverters and portable generators that are not actually earth grounded. And an outlet tester, like this one, can actually be used to do some testing to ensure that your system is in fact neutral ground, ground bonded and a neutral ground bond is desirable in a situation like this where again you're not actually earth grounding your system. So to demonstrate that uh, this Elite 400 Watt Pro inverter is in fact neutral ground bounded we're going to plug in this tester and if it is in fact neutral ground bonded it should load up correct which in fact it does it's probably hard for you to see but the indication here is that two lights on to the right side of this indicate that this is in fact correctly wired there's no open ground there's no open neutral so it does in fact indicate that this has a internally established neutral ground bond we can check this also at the outlets here that I've installed um, with this inverter and if we simply plug this tester in here we should find the top two lights also light up which in fact they do so this is wired properly with a neutral ground bond to improve safety what we're going to do today to continue to improve the safe use of this system is something I should have done initially and that was to install a GFCI outlet or ground fault circuit interrupter outlet uh, using these can also improve safe use by uh, people and protect your system. We're also going to install a new outlet cover that complements this GFCI outlet. So the one that I initially used uh, was a simple 110 outlet and uh, this is not a, a cheap upgrade. The cover is quite expensive if you buy it from Leviton. The um, GFCI is uh, quite expensive relatively speaking too but it's hard to put a price on safety. So I'm going to uh, make this installation and we'll come back and test it with the outlet tester to ensure that it's wired correctly. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a bit. Okay, that upgrade is now finished. What we've done is swap out the old 110 AC outlet with a new cover. So the GFCI cover made by Leviton, the new GFCI outlet. And I was very pleased to find that through this upgrade that everything fit back inside of the original blue shallow box that I had originally used to install this outlet. Of course, you need to make sure that you are installing your wiring correctly. The white neutral goes to the neutral connection on the outlet black to hot the ground green wire to the ground and then also make sure that you properly rewire if you have built a similar system your AC voltmeter and ammeter making sure those connections are all correct as well so what we're going to do now is power the AC side of the system up and confirm that that neutral ground bond has been maintained and then we're getting a correct reading using the outlet tester so we'll close up the top here reach around behind and simply switch on 
the master battery switch that powers up our AC side of the system. It's reading 109 volts presently and ideally if I open this cover we're going to see that the indicator light is lit, which it is, and we're going to come back up and just double check our connection here with the outlet tester. This outlet tester again should read with two lights on the right hand side if it is correct which again means that even though this is not grounded it has a neutral ground bond inside of the inverter and likewise since our inverter is passing its AC power down to this new GFCI outlet we should find that when I plug this in here we get the same reading to be the top two lights on this indicator as you can see both of those are on indicating that we have the GFCI outlet GFCI outlet along with a neutral ground connection coming from our inverter so this hopefully will make a positive change in the interest of enhancing the safety of this system um, if you take a look at some of the materials that I provided under the part one video there's a number of wiring diagrams that will help you understand if you're revisiting how the AC inverter was connected to the outlet and also incorporating that voltmeter amp meter. But I, as always appreciate your interest thanks for tuning in for this video and look forward to additional upgrades in the future thanks very much